From the last video, we know that the jaw is a type 3 lever in most mammals, including humans. And we also know that the teeth at the back of the jaw must have the best leverage. Those molars at the back would surely be the best for biting into those really hard foods, right? Right? Well, probably not. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down the constrained lever model of feeding biomechanics. This model explains how and why the jaw joints can be at risk of pretty serious injury when biting hard bulky objects with the back teeth. Welcome to the Scullywag Lab, I'm Dr. Rex. After watching the previous video, you should have a pretty good understanding of the different types of levers and how this relates to the jaw. But, 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 the levers I described in the last video were two-dimensional, and the world we live in is three-dimensional. And when biting onto objects with one side of the mouth, that extra dimension can really mess things around. The constraint lever model explains how even the jaw as a type 3 lever can sometimes become a type 1 lever and cause dislocation of the jaw joints. But first, none of this is going to make any sense without a basic understanding of how force vectors work. So let's start there. A force vector has two things. It has a direction that the force is moving in and it has a magnitude describing how intense the force is. This is usually given in newtons. Now multiple forces can be acting on an object at the same time. These will each have their own directions and magnitudes. These force vectors can be added together using a simple trigonometry. Uh, and we do this to find out the overall direction and magnitude acting on the object. And the most basic example to give here is a Pythagoras calculation. So finding the overall force being applied to an object with four newtons of horizontal force and three newtons of vertical force gives us five newtons in an average direction, which is kind of forwards and upwards. This is called the resultant force vector. Since this is gonna include all the muscles on the skull going forward, we'll call this guy Arnold from now on. So how does this work in skulls or in skeletons in general? Well, each muscle fiber represents its own unique force vector and Arnold can be estimated by combining together the force vectors from all the flexing muscles. Let's look at this in a koala skull. The jaw lever system has a few muscle complexes used during biting. The two main ones are the temporalis complex and the masseter complex. The muscles of both the temporalis complex and the masseter complex have their own overall force vectors representing the combined forces of all flexing muscle fibers on each. But these can be further combined to estimate the overall force direction and location of Arnold during biting. Arnold can have different directions depending on the kind of mammals being looked at but the location where he passes through the skull tends to be positioned just behind the back teeth in most species. Notice how Arnold's also positioned in the middle of the skull, and that's because Arnold is the average location of the same kinds of muscles on both sides of the skull. Now, during any bite, well, at least with any teeth behind the canines, which are usually done with one side of the mouth, there are three points of contact between the cranium and mandible. These are the two jaw joints and the biting tooth. The side of the skull biting the object is called the working side. The side not biting is called the balancing side. These three points work together in what's called a triangle of support. And Arnold sits neatly inside that triangle made by these three points. When biting with teeth further forward in the jaw, there's no problem at all. The jaw is balanced and all the jaw muscles can be used at once with the same amount of strength. But things get a little bit more risky when we move backwards along the jaw. In the koala here, when the tooth at the back is used to bite an object, Arnold falls outside the triangle of support. This means that the triangle is no longer balanced and the jaw joint on the working side of the skull begins to be pulled apart instead of being pushed together. However, all is not lost. To get back to a balanced bite, Arnold needs to be moved from his location through the middle of the skull to a location within the triangle of support on the working side. This is done by lowering the amount of muscle force being applied to the balancing side of the skull. In other words, to bite with a back tooth, the koala needs to soften its use of the muscles on the other side of its face. This moves Arnold towards the working side, back into the triangle of support, and ultimately stabilizes the joint. Once again, Arnold saves the day. 
The way this all works is being compared to a three-legged stool. No, 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 not, not a three-legged stool with the legs positioned evenly, but a four-legged stool with one leg missing. I don't have one of these, but what I do have is this cute little Ikea table. So let's work with that. When this table has all of its legs, it's fine to put weight on it anywhere. But when we remove a leg, things become a little bit more risky. So let's just remove a leg and lay down some indicators. Okay, imagine this yellow tape is the triangle of support with this being the back tooth here, the working side jaw joint here, and the balancing side jaw joint here. Now, if muscle force is applied evenly to both sides of the skull, Arnold will be positioned in the middle of the skull. That's this white cross here. The problem is that when trying to bite with his tooth, Arnold falls outside of the triangle. This means any attempt to put weight on the table like this will cause the table to topple over. In the case of the jaw, this pulls apart the working side jaw joint, potentially leading to dislocation. That's a pretty serious injury. But if we lower the balancing side muscle force, this will bring Arnold back within the triangle, restoring balance to the system. And that's when we can do a little dance, make a little love, and bite down tonight. Yeah, bite down tonight. Ultimately, what all this means is that the jaw can be divided into three main sections, based on the intersection of Arnold with the jaw joints and their opposing tooth rows. The first section at the front is the safest section in the whole jaw. This is where all the jaw muscles can be squeezed as hard as they're needed to be to bite into an object. We can go 100% Arnold here. This is determined by where the line that connects the balancing side jaw joint and Arnold in the center meet the row of teeth on the other side. This is most commonly around the mm, second or third molar, but it depends on the animal. The second section is where the balancing side muscle force needs to be decreased to balance the triangle of support. Biting is still possible here, but there is an increased risk of jaw injury if you're biting too hard with the balancing side muscles. This means that Arnold is a little bit weaker on one side in this section. The third section is where no balance biting can happen. This is where no amount of changing muscle usage will fit Arnold back within the triangle of support because the triangle is positioned behind Arnold in all possible positions. Put that cookie down now! What this all means is that bites further back in the jaw can't necessarily be as hard as bites that are a little bit further forward in the jaw. Sure, this might be helped a little bit with increased leverage because the teeth at the back of the jaw are closer to the jaw joint. And as I mentioned in the last video, some carnivores do have adaptations to their jaw joints to allow more balancing side muscle force and a stronger Arnold. But for most mammals, the place to generate the hardest bite forces tends to be a few teeth further forward on the jaw, while those molars at the back are best for further grinding up those foods that have already been broken down by the more anterior teeth. So that's the constrained lever model of feeding biomechanics. If you found this content helpful or useful at all, leave a like and subscribe and I will catch you in the next video.